I've had a lot of folks reach out to me asking me kind of like how to learn this and that, like how to learn malware development is kind of like the most common one. I get a lot of folks asking me how you kind of get started in cybersecurity, how to get started in information security, how to get started in all of these different things. And one of the things that I've always recommended was project-based learning. Over time though, I've learned that I kind of haven't given people the best advice on that. And I haven't given them enough nuanced advice because a lot of times my advice is go find something that you're interested in, that you're passionate in, that seems like cool to you, go and learn that. And what I ended up realizing was that whenever I tell people that, they will go and pick a really, really ambitious project. And they will immediately dive into that and have that be the way that they learn a new programming language or the way that they learn this, that, or the other. That's not always a bad thing, right? You need to have a certain approach. You need to have a certain amount of ambition in the types of projects that you pick, but you can go too far. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Um, this video is sponsored by Code Crafters. We're going to get into that a little bit later. I'm not going to just immediately dump a sponsorship thing on you. We are going to talk a little bit about project-based learning first. So let's say this is project based learning. Now, if you're starting out, and when I say starting out, I don't mean like you're a brand new programmer. I don't mean that you know, you're know you trying to learn AI or artificial intelligence or anything like that. I'm not making any assumptions. I'm going to try to be as general as humanly possible. But when you are starting out, you have a certain skill level, okay? So your skill level might be here. So let's just say this is your skill level. and you are looking for projects. The idea here is that you don't just sit there and read books and blogs and crap like that and watch my videos and learn about theory. The idea here is that you learn a little bit of theory at a time and immediately apply it. Now, I'm not a cognitive scientist. I don't know just a ton about how the brain works and all of that fun stuff, but the idea is essentially that in order to kind of commit things to long-term memory and to learn complex topics, you really need to commit that to memory by doing stuff with it. So you don't learn how to run well by learning about running, by learning about running dynamics and how to move your feet and how to periodize your training and things like that. You have to go out and run. It's the same thing with software security. You need to um, you know, learn things through projects. So. With information security, it's a little bit different, but with software development, there's a zero startup cost to trying to build something new. So there's really no point in not learning through um, projects. So with project-based learning, there's a good and a series of bad ways to approach it. One of the worst ways that you can approach it is not doing project-based learning at all and just trying to learn theory and reading blogs and things like that. But there are bad ways to do project-based learning. So let's say you've got your skill level here represented in the white square. The best project that you could possibly do is going to take your skill level and it's going to add a little bit onto it. Okay, so here is a good project. Okay, so this good project right here is going to be a little bit more difficult than what you're comfortable with. This delta right here, this right here is where the learning happens. So this is the important delta. This is where learning, all of it happens with this area right here that is outside of your comfort zone, that is, our, that is outside of your skill level. Now, if your skill level is I've been programming for 15 years and I know what I'm doing. I just want to learn AI or you know machine learning. There is still an area outside of your comfort zone. There's pretty much no developer outside of maybe the CarMax or you know some of the really, really high level, very, very experienced programmers that they, they still have things that are outside of their comfort zone. In fact, I think John Carmack recently said that every like 10 or 15 years, he changes his focus. So he did VR for 10 or 15 years. Now he's, I believe he's doing AI ML stuff. I'm not entirely sure. sure. But basically every developer is going to have an area that is outside of their comfort zone. Okay, so a good project is going to take your skill level and challenge it a little bit so that later your skill level grows, right? So your skill level will eventually get here 
and then your next good project is going to need to get a little bit harder. It's going to need to get a little bit more advanced and you're going to keep pushing this delta here, if I can use my mouse correctly, you're going to keep pushing this delta here over and over again until you know you kind of reach a point where you're comfortable. Ideally, you never reach that point, right? You keep on pushing your skill level a little bit more and more. Now let's talk about what a bad project looks like. There are multiple kinds of bad projects. So let's just say this is our bad project. A bad project is going to be one Damn it. Is going to be one like this. So we are going to take this. We're going to turn it red to indicate that it's bad. And we're going to say it is really, really easy. And if I've been programming for 10 or 15 years, I don't need to be working on a calculator app. That's something that you work on your first semester of freshman year, or your first week of a boot camp, etc. Um, that's not really something super useful for me or for most programmers. I would even argue like the really newbie programmers, they can do better than a calculator app. A to-do list app for React might be a really good example of this. You know, that would be a good beginner project, but for most people who have been programming for any period of time, doing another to-do list app isn't going to teach them much. Okay, so another bad project. So let's just say bad project number two. This one is going to be way outside of your comfort zone, okay? So your skill level is here, and you are just blasting it. Now, this is what I see most often with folks in malware development. What I see with folks in malware development is they're like, okay, I have never written a line of Rust in my life. I have no idea how the compiler works. I don't know what borrow checking is. I'm going to write malware. Okay technically doable right not necessarily on its face a horrible idea but then they start jumping into okay well let's look at dll side loading let's look at process injection let's look at how to make it stealthy let's look at how to make it a dropper and they immediately start jumping into these really complex topics right and the problem with this is one they're not really guided you know so there's not a ton of material on how to do this stuff and if there is all, a lot of times you're going to find you're doing copy paste and you're not really understanding what it is you're doing and you're just going to find yourself way out of your depth. Okay. And you're going to be spinning your wheels trying to do something that you are just not prepared for. You're not, you're going to be constantly, you know, arguing with the borrow checker and rust. You're going to be constantly arguing with lifetimes when you aren't anywhere close to being able to understand what a lifetime is. So all of these are fine technically. You want to be pushing your boundaries as much as possible, but pushing them too far with a project that's way out of your league isn't always the best idea. A lot of times you're gonna find yourself super frustrated. So insert Code Crafters here. Code Crafters is a really awesome educational platform that kind of helps bridge this gap. They've got some intermediate style projects that you can work on to learn. You know, so they've got everything from implementing a peer-to-peer -peer BitTorrent lights, you know, kind of thing to implementing Redis and building that from scratch. And it's all guided, but it's guided in such a way that you can't just copy and paste stuff. You actually have to learn how all of this stuff is working. So that's one of the reasons why I like CodeCrafters, one of the reasons why, you know, I'm a CodeCrafters par partner. If you want to check out CodeCrafters, it's an awesome learning platform for developers. You can click the link down below. Anyways, the difficult question is, okay, how do I calculate the appropriate amount to push my skill level? I wish I could tell you that there was a delta. I wish I could tell you that there was a really good formula or algorithm to kind of figure this stuff out. There isn't, okay? You need to constantly kind of push yourself and use your logical thinking in such a way that you can kind of determine how to find the right type of project. If you kind of understand state and react, you really don't need to do another to-do list app. If you're trying to build full stack web applications, you should probably figure out how to interact with backend APIs and maybe figure out a project that you know kind of fits that narrative. If you're trying to do AI ML type stuff, maybe jumping straight to building your own like LLM isn't the greatest option. Maybe start with something like in reinforcement learning. That's kind of where I'm starting right now. You know, all of these things are not super intuitive and there's not a really great answer to the how do I push myself 
but whenever you're picking out a project, maybe keep it in the back of your mind. Like, hey, is this maybe a little bit too far? Am I maybe picking something that's a little bit too difficult? Or am I picking something that's maybe a little too easy? Have I been writing React apps for like 10 years now and I'm trying to learn a new technology by creating another to-do list app? It's probably not a good idea. So all of this is to say, project-based learning is great. Project-based learning needs to be applied correctly in order for you to really like get the gains from project-based learning that you really can get. And pushing yourself way too far outside of your comfort zone is only going to lead to a lot of frustration and irritation and you're probably going to end up giving it up, being quite frank. That's about it. Check out Code Crafters. Take it easy. Peace.